Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, this video is the first of a three-part series on SIP and the reason why I want to split it up into uh, two or three different videos is because it's a pretty broad subject to begin with but but also what I want to do with this is I want to not only cover some of the basic concepts but also work towards being able to understand and read SIP logs. And I think it's better if we just sort of uh, take all this information in smaller, more manageable chunks rather than one long video. Okay, now this is a SIP log I pulled from a call attempt between a DX80 and an 8845 video phone, both registered to a CUCM. And just looking at it, it looks like a bunch of nonsense text. Uh, but after we spend some time talking about the call flow process and some of the underlying protocols like uh, STP, uh, RTP, and DTMF, some of the technologies that are involved in the call process, you'll see that it's actually quite readable, uh, which can be very helpful, uh, not only just to sort of generically understand SIP, but especially in situations when you need to troubleshoot and so forth. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, now SIP or session initiation protocol is a signaling protocol. Uh, although we think of SIP as being used primarily for audio and video, it was originally conceived as a way to minimize payloads during a time when bandwidth rates were pretty slow. So it can and often is used to create uh, sessions for, for really any kind of real-time data that you'd want to use, not just audio and video. Now, SIP endpoints can't communicate without a SIP server or some kind of uh, call control device. So both Cisco CCM and Expressway can function as a SIP server. Now, one really good thing about SIP uh, that you may have already noticed is that SIP messages use plain text. And as long as you're familiar with the message types, uh, the methods and the formats involved in a SIP conversation, they can be pretty easy to read. So to start out with, there are two SIP message types, request and response. A request is a message that's sent to a server and it invokes a method or function. Now there's actually several different SIP request methods, uh, but really we're only concerned with these five here today. These are the basic methods that you should be familiar with. And we're gonna see some of these later when we go back and take a closer look at that SIP log. Okay, so the first is invite, which is when a SIP endpoint sends a message to another endpoint to request a SIP session. There's also ACK, so a SIP endpoint can send and receive several responses to an invite. And the ACK message acknowledges the final response to the invite message. Then there's cancel, and this uh, terminates a call that hasn't been completely established. And then there's options. Now, options is used only for Cisco gateways. It uh, also queries servers to determine their capabilities. Uh, and then there's buy, and that's used in instances when the call is declined. And of course, when you hang up the call and the call is terminated. Now, SIP requests are answered with SIP responses. And here you can see uh, there are six different types of responses. These are actually a lot easier to understand by looking at examples. So for example, the 100 series, uh, this designates informational or provisional responses such as a, a 100 for trying or a 180 for ringing. Uh, the 200 series is the familiar OK response signaling that the request was successful. Okay, so the 100 and 200 series will never show an error code because they're all about SIP communication. Uh, but the 400 series signals request failure such as a 404 user not found and a 500 series response refers to the server failure. Okay, so 300 through 600, these are basically error messages. So the number series will point you to the category of error that you're experiencing. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about SIP call flows. So SIP calls are processed according to two methods, early offer and delayed offer. Now early offer is by far the most common type. It's, it's used in most, most cases. So we'll go ahead and look at early offer first. Now, early offer starts by one endpoint dialing another using SIP. Uh, in this case, Chuck calling John, and then an invite message is sent via a SIP server. And then the SIP server will send a status code of 100 that it's trying John's endpoint. Okay, now the headers of this invite request describe the kind of session that uh, Chuck's endpoint wants to establish. And the body is the SDP or uh, session description protocol information. Now, we're going to go much deeper into SDP in the next video, but briefly, uh, SDP describes the kind of media that you, or in this case, Chuck's endpoint, is willing to send and receive, 
like the codecs that his endpoint can use, uh, the IP address, uh, the ports to open in the call, etc. Okay, so this allows John, not Chuck, but the called device, which in this case is John's endpoint, to choose the codec it wants to use for the session. So it'll choose the codec and then send its SDP information back to John's device, along with the 200 OK message. So the takeaway here is that one, SDP is sent in the invite, and two, John's endpoint gets to see what media or codecs are available and make a selection before sending back to Chuck its own capabilities. Now, delay it offer is different from this in that SDP is not sent in the invite request. Essentially, uh, the called party, John, will receive an invite, but there's no message body, so his endpoint is unaware of what codec, ports, etc. they're going to use. Um, then when his call is answered and a 200 OK message is sent back to Chuck's endpoint, the sending and receiving of SDP information is uh, more of a back and forth process. Okay, so just to recap, in early offer, SDP is sent in the invite, and in delayed offer, a communication has to be established between the devices before uh, SDP can be negotiated. So this is probably a good place for us to pause now. In part two of this series, we're going to talk about SDP, which again is how SIP exchanges information about the endpoint's capabilities, and also RTP and, and how the voice and video transmissions are carried. We'll go into that as well. Okay, that'll do it for now. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.